Vasishta is examining our notions about the body. This is a difficult one to get over, especially from, from within the yogic tradition, which puts tremendous emphasis on the body, even though it's trying to transcend the body. Even as there is no relationship between light and darkness, there can be no relationship between the body and the embodied. So what's meant here by embodied is, is pointing towards our deeper self here. And that self can have no relationship with the body. When the truth is known, the erroneous perception vanishes. And that erroneous perception is the sum of our notions of having a body. We have various sensations or there are certain experiences going on which we characterize as happening through the body and we build up this notion of the body. So it's not an erroneous perception as such, although it seems that way. It's an, it's an erroneous cognition or percept, an erroneous percept. The self is consciousness, pure, eternal, self-luminous and free from change. The body is impermanent and impure. How can there exist a relation between the two? The body is enlivened by the life force or by the other elements. This body can have no relationship whatsoever with the self. Thus, even if the two, self and body, are regarded as two distinct realities, there can be no relationship between them. But if this duality is unreal, then such thinking itself becomes irrelevant. Let this truth be firmly established in you. There is no bondage nor liberation at any time for anyone, anywhere. So we talk in terms of bondage and liberation of a body, mind, self. And we have to not get too caught up in these notions. These become notions. And we start trying to construct a belief system, a reality in terms of these notions. And we have to put them all aside. Very often the greatest obstacle to spiritual realization is spiritual teaching itself. A huge amount of ignorance is propagated in the name of spirituality and it needs to be dropped. And the Yoga Vasishta reminds us of this now and again. It is clear that all this is but the one infinite self or consciousness. It's clear. It's self-evident. It's axiomatic. It's obvious. It's a bit like when you're looking at an optical illusion. There's a famous one of uh, a, a line drawing of an old woman and a young woman in the same picture. Some people can see the young woman, some people can see the old woman. Some people can switch between either and some people can't. But eventually it can happen. And there's no, there's no technique. All you can do is keep looking. All you can do is keep looking. There's no technique really to seeing one or the other. But once you see it, it's obvious, isn't it? It's clear. And this is, this is the situation we're in. The whole of what we consider reality is like an optical illusion. And we can, once we see it, it's clear and it's obvious. But when you don't see it, it's frustratingly, it's frustratingly, well, it's frustrating. <laughs> if you lend ear to concepts like I am happy or unhappy, or I am ignorant, then they will bring you endless sorrow. The body came into being because of wind, life breath. It exists because of it. Its speech is caused by it, and all the senses function because of it. The intelligence in, in it is but the individual consciousness. Now even here, we're getting notions of the body. 
about it being brought together from the elements and it's got this life breath in it because of wind or prana I suppose and the senses are based in it this, these are all notions these are the notions that we're getting here but what it's saying is that the intelligence within it is but the infinite consciousness and that infinite consciousness alone is spread out everywhere as, as space etc I think that space etc refers to the elements but also to all notions, all objects, all apparent objects and the latter are reflected in consciousness and this reflection has come to be known as the mind and this reflection, I, I like to think of it rather than as reflecting in a mirror as the mind reflecting the mind reflecting on things. This is the cognitive process. This is the mind at work. When the mind abandons its body cage and flies away, it experiences the self, which is consciousness. And that body cage is all our notions about the mind. It's not that we take on our ethereal or astral body and go flying to some higher realm of existence. We drop the notions that cages to the idea of a body and we realize our nature as consciousness where there is fragrance there is flower where there is mind there is consciousness where there's anything there's consciousness because without that without that consciousness we can't be aware of anything but the mind alone is the cause for the appearance of the world since the or we could say mind in the sense of awareness. Since the consciousness is omnipresent and infinite, though it is the ultimate cause, it is not the cause of the world appearance. It's omnipresent because whatever you're aware of means that there has to be awareness. So we say awareness is omnipresent. It's infinite in that it can be aware of an infinite amount of things. So, the, so consciousness here is in the sense of awareness. Awareness is omnipresent because whatever you're aware of has to, has to have awareness or has to, there has to be awareness there. It's the ultimate cause in the sense that we can't be aware of anything without it. And it's not the cause of the world appearance. It's the cognitive process which arises within it which is the cause of the world appearance but not the consciousness itself because we can be a conscious of just the experiencing, the field of experiencing, the stream of experiencing. Hence, truly, the cause for this world appearance is non-investigation into the nature of reality, ignorance. This means not questioning the cognitive process, not looking beyond it. Even as a lamp instantly removes darkness, the light of self-knowledge dispels the darkness of ignorance instantly. Hence, one should inquire into what is known as jiva, or mind, or the inner psychological factor, or what I would call the cognitive process. Look at how you form notions about things, and then look and try and just get in touch with the basic experiencing that is going on, the underlying experiencing. Especially with regards to notions that you've got a body, 